Hello, today we will be colouring up the Whimsy Stamps image Jillian from the Wii Stamp set Jillian and Friends. As usual, I will be doing the skin first. I start with a darker marker and do an outline around the hairline and down the neck before I swap over to my second darkest marker, E13. Make sure that you colour over what you've already done a little bit to blend the colour better. When I get to E02, I'll make sure to also colour in a little bit more of the nose, as well as continuing to blend the colours I've already coloured in. This carries on as I use the marker E00 as well as E000. I do the same when I colour up the feet, but here I make sure that I add a little bit of line to mark where the ankle is. When colouring in the hair you can see that these images have a lot of lines already. It's very helpful using these lines as guidelines when you colour in the hair. Basically you can colour over these lines with the darkest marker and trace them almost completely. And then in the big gaps that you have between these lines, you can colour in strands. On these images I have done mostly one or two in each gap. What I do is I take the darkest marker and I flick from the outer edge towards the centre. Once I have done that, I take my lighter marker and I go over where I've just coloured and flick it slightly closer to the centre so that it covers a little bit more area than the first marker. I prefer to use four colours when I colour up hair and basically the darker marker will be your shadows and the lighter marker will be your highlights. The two markers in the middle will then determine how dark the hair will be. The more you use of the darker of the two, the darker the hair will be, and the more you use of the lighter one, the lighter the hair will be. Here I've used quite a lot of the E27, which makes the hair quite dark. As you can see on the hair, some of the lines are quite close together, and that makes it a little bit fiddly to get a line in between as well. So make sure you're quite light on your hand, and if you're not comfortable doing that one at all, skip it. I mean, why not? But if you do skip it, you should try to do a dark line where the line is, and then a slightly lighter one outside of it again, so it's more of a gradient. Or what you can do as well with the little ones that are down around her face, you skip doing the outline completely because the outline there isn't to separate strands or bits of hair from each other so you use the darker marker in the middle and then lighter mar markers on the side so you create the effect that there is more hair than it actually is. It can be a bit tricky doing the flicks in a curve so you can always practice a little bit on a piece of paper before you try to do it on the actual hair. Just make sure that you're quite light on your hand and it normally works itself out. Obviously with anything, practice is the key. To make sure you get the darker shadows as dark as you actually want them, it is sometimes an idea to go back over what you've already coloured with the darkest marker and do it again after you've coloured the rest of the hair or at least that section. You don't have to go as far in as you did before, you can just do the outlines around the sections of the hair creating even deeper shadows and by doing this you will see that the different bits of hair are more contrasted to each other. So you can see what bit is overlaying the other and so on if you make sure that you add all the deeper shadows properly.
What I'm using here is my blender, which is the marker with the number zero. I was colouring this up rather quickly, and it's quite easy to get a little bit outside the lines when you do, so I thought I would show you what I do when this happens. Basically, you use that blender marker to lightly push the ink back inside the lines. That basically means that you start uh, outside the bit that you went outside the line, and you use that marker to just colour towards where you want the ink to go. As it is colourless, it won't really add any colour to your image, but obviously it can be a little bit tricky to do this, especially with the markers that have a bit of red in them, like the hair and skin. But as long as you're being careful, and you can always repeat the process after it dries up as well, then it normally tends to look alright. Right, so for the flowers, basically what I do is I take my darkest flower marker and I draw lines out from the centre. Then I'll take the second lightest marker and I draw the same lines, just a little bit thicker and a little bit longer. Then I take the second lightest marker and I colour around the edges, not all the way out to the edges, and I make sure that it is curved properly. So the little bit that is left is for the lightest colour, and then I colour a little bit over the, the stuff I've already coloured, as I mentioned before, so that it will blend properly. There are a lot of fiddly little bits in this image, especially the little circles. The easiest way to get some depth in them is to just use two markers. Either the darkest marker and the lightest marker, the darkest marker and the second lightest marker, or the second darkest and the lightest. Make sure you always skip at least one number if you're going to use two markers. Otherwise the colours are too similar and you won't really get the contrast you want. What I did as well is I added a few more dots because I thought it looked cool and gave a nice effect. But when you do this, you have to make sure you barely touch the paper with your pen, otherwise the dots are going to get quite large. For the centre of the flowers, I basically colour them in in a, in a dark colour. Um, and then I go over with my jelly roll, or any white marker pen that you really like. And then you add little dots. Just means that you don't have to colour it very detailed with your actual markers. Right, let's colour up the dress. I've decided that blue is a nice colour to go with the yellowy orange flowers. And first off, I use the darkest marker B39 to create the shadowed areas. If you're not quite comfortable with where you want the darker areas and where you want the shadows of the pleats and anything like that to be, you can always use a lighter marker to draw it up first. And then when you're sure you know where you want them, then you start on the darker marker, because when you colour it over, you won't really see where you had the lighter marker to start with. So, I use very little of the shadow colour, as you can see, before I swap over to B26. And I colour about half of what is left of the white space in the various sections. Then I swap over to B23 and I colour up almost everything that is left before I colour up the remaining parts with a lighter blue marker. The same process is uh, repeated on the shoes as well, leaving just a tiny bit for the lightest marker.
I wasn't quite sure what colour to use together with the blue dress, so I opted for white. I used the N3 to create darker shadows, and then I used the N1 to add the middle area. And then I leave the lightest areas as white. Right, let's ground a girl, as it's called. She needs something to stand on. It's not that nice to be floating, it's a little bit unnatural. So what we'll be doing here is we're going to make our own ground. First, we'll create a little bit of shadow around her feet. As we mostly have the light source coming from her front, more of the shadows will be behind her than in front of her. We'll also make a semi-gradient patch of grass for her to stand on, so we use the darker marker all the way to down to the bottom of the page. At least I've done that. If you print the girl quite high up on the page, that could be quite a lot of grass and way more than you actually want. After we use the darker marker here, we go over to YG17, which is the second darkest. Make sure you colour over the darker one quite a bit so that it blends out nicely. And then you don't have to be very picky about how you do this, you can just almost sketch it out. Because if you are quick enough, when you colour it up, it'll blend really nicely. So it doesn't matter how picky you are with where everything is. So, first off, we are making the area a little patch that she stood on and then we're adding a little bit of a hilly countryside be behind her and then we repeat the process of having the darker area at the bottom and then lighter as we go towards the sky right well that's us done with this video thank you all for watching